وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin as always by praising Allah by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions Welcome to this short course by al Madrasatul Umariya. And this short course, insha'Allah ta'ala, is all about the Muslim family. And the Muslim family is a comprehensive topic. It has a lot of different aspects to it. And we're going to try to take it in a comprehensive way, step by step. So I wanted to start with the mafhum of Al-Usratul Muslimah. What's the general understanding of the Muslim family? You know, sort of start at the beginning. What is the Muslim family and what are perhaps the different words that are used for it in Arabic or might the words we find for it in the Quran, some of the general ayat and ahadith about the Muslim family, just to, to give us an overview. And then inshaAllah ta'ala from there, I wanted to move on to talk about the beginning of the Muslim family, which is obviously marriage because the Muslim family starts when two people get married and that they start their own little family and that's the beginning of the Muslim family and then on from there inshallah to look at children and the relationship of parents with children and children with parents to look at the relationship between the siblings in the same house and then to look at the issue from a wider perspective and look at the wider members of the family and how we should keep ties with them and some of the issues that are people commonly face in all of those different relationships whether it be issues relating to the relationships between husband and wife, or between parents and children, or children and parents, or between siblings, or between wider family members, inshallah ta'ala. So we really want to try and approach this in a comprehensive way, and inshallah ta'ala, try to bring evidences, try to make it evidence-based, to bring you evidences from the Book of Allah, from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and from the statements of the righteous people who passed away before us, so then inshallah ta'ala we can get a, a really good understanding of this topic. And right at the beginning, I just want to remind everybody, and I want to remind myself before I remind anyone else, that the purpose of studying this short course is not just for the sake of knowledge in of itself, you know, knowledge for knowledge's sake. In fact, that might even come under the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal al Hakum al Your your hearts have become preoccupied with just gathering things for the sake of gathering them, just having more of something for the sake of having more of something. So we don't want this knowledge to be something that we just want to have more of it because there's a course available and I just want to watch the videos and I just want to know it for the sake of knowing it. But really we want to put it into practice. We want Allah Azza wa Jal and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma allimna ma yinfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zinna ilma O oh Allah, Teach us what will benefit us and benefit us with what you teach us and increase us in knowledge. So we want that knowledge so that we can put it into practice. We want to be able to implement it. We want to have a better relationship or better relationships within our family, have a better home, a better Muslim home, and inshallah ta'ala be an inspiration and an example for those around us. And to do that, we have to have knowledge because remember, knowledge comes before we do any actions at all. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ Know that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except Allah and then seek forgiveness for your sins. So knowledge always comes before we put something into practice. But if we just get the knowledge and we don't put it into practice, then that's a problem in of itself. So we want to, inshallah ta'ala, start with the right intention. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our intention to make this action of ours sincerely for Him alone and to make it pleasing to Him, to make it in accordance with what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought to give us the knowledge that we need and the ability 
to put it into practice, inshallah ta'ala. Also, before we start the course and we get into the content uh, of this short course, inshallah, I would also like to draw your attention to the fact that as a student uh, who is following a structured course, it will be really helpful if you have a notepad and pen with you or, and you were to take notes, inshallah ta'ala, and inshallah try to jot down any questions, any things that you don't understand, likewise, things that you would like to read up on, things you would like to research more about, you'll get, you'll have a much, much better experience that way, inshallah ta'ala. So that being said, we want to get right into the content of this short course. And we want to start with the mafhum, the understanding of al-usra, al-muslimah, the understanding of what the Muslim family actually is. We're going to start with the language. That's typically where we, we start when we, when we talk about these different topics. We usually start with the Arabic language. And we're going to look at the different words in Arabic for family and try to understand something about them or try to, to inshallah, extract some benefits from them. So the word that probably comes to mind more than any other word is the word al-usra. Al-usra. And I remember looking this word up. I went back to some of the dictionaries, some of the classical uh, scholars of the Arabic language, and just wanted to know where does this word come from? This word al-usra, which we use for the family. And I found something very interesting. And I found this to be a real benefit uh, that some of the scholars they mentioned, it comes back to ar-rabtu bil amr al-wahid. It comes back to all of the members of that family being bound together by a common, by, by something in common that binds them and together and brings them together. And really that does tell us a lot about the family because, you know, as it's famously said, you can change your friends, but you can't change your family. You, your family is something that you are bound to. Whether you like it or not, you are going to have responsibilities towards those family members, inshallah ta'ala, as Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, legislated, even regardless of, of the way that certain members of the family might behave, still those responsibilities are going to be there as we're going to hear. So the fact that the family al-usra, it's something that brings people together. And it's something that binds people together, almost no matter what happens, there, there will always be that bond that exists between those family members because they're tied by something which brings them together. And that is perhaps one of the meanings of al-usra. As for al-usra, as it relates to sort of the more technical meaning, then it's used for al-qaraba, wa-zawaj. It's used for uh, relations in terms of marriage and relations in terms of relatives who are near to you. Another word which comes to mind is al-a'ila, al-a'ila. And it's said that the difference is that al-a'ila refers specifically to those who live under the same roof. And that's going to be the focus of our course, inshallah ta'ala. It's going to be focusing on all the people who, who live under the same roof typically. So you might have in a, in a typical household, mom, uh, dad, the kids, you have some siblings and you have the relationship there and so on. So that is what you would call al-a'ila that the a'ila, they live together in the same house. And there's something else that some of the, some of the scholars mentioned, and that is that the a'ila are people who are under a single, or there's a, there's a person who is like the head of the household. There's a person who is the head of the household. And all of the members of that a'ila are kind of look back to the head of the household, so to speak. And that's something, again, we're going to be talking more about as we get into the dynamics of the family and how the family is structured. But that's something we can take from, from the word in terms of the language. Another word that we hear very commonly is al-ahl. Al-ahl. And al-ahl originally refers to a person's wife. For example, a person would say, or like we find in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith is in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and it's also a hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi, wa ana khayrukum li ahli. 
that the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of you are those who are best to their family. And here, the primary meaning you take is to their, to their wife or to their wives. And I am the best of you to my family, I to my wives. But the word family, the word ahl, it goes wider than that. It starts off originally as referring to a man and his wife, and then sort of it expands or people use it in a more general way to refer to the wider relatives and the other people who are in the house. Another word that we hear very commonly is al-al. Like when we talk about alu bayti and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people of the household of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the word al-al, it comes back to the Arabic word raja'ah, to go back to, meaning yarji'u ilayhim. He's the, they're the ones that he goes back to, either in terms of his lineage goes back to them, or in terms of the fact that you know he kind of comes back to them and it's used uh, in terms of nasab like the word al-ahl and it can also be used for followers like when we talk about the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi that the al can be used to mean the family and it can be used also to mean uh, followers as well but we're going to use it here in the context of the family, in the context of al-ahl. And another word that we also hear being used is al-bayt. And al-bayt here doesn't mean the house as in the place where the people live. But it means uh, al-bayt as in the household. As in the household. And they are, like the scholars say, al-a'ilah, al-ladhina yaskununa ma'a al-rajul. They are the family members who live alongside a man. So a man is living with his family members and those family members who live alongside him, they are from the bait of that person, the household of that person. So these are all uh, words which we can look at, which will come up, but only some of them are used in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we're going to give some examples of that. So when we come to the Qur'an, I want to start off with an ayah which has a lot of lessons in it for us about the family in general. And that is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَنِينَ وَحَفَدًا وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ أَفَبِالْبَاطِلِ يُؤْمِنُونَ وَبِنِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ هُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ this is in Surah An-Nahl. This is in Surah An-Nahl. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَاللَّهُ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا Allah has made for you, from yourselves, wives. Now there's two things here. First of all, this refers no doubt to Adam and Hawa alayhim as -salam. And Adam and Hawa Adam and Hawa, who were the origin of mankind, Allah Azza wa Jal created all of mankind as we're going to come to the ayah, inshallah ta'ala, shortly. Allah Azza wa Jal created all of mankind from Adam and from Hawa alayhim as -salam. And Allah Azza wa Jal from them made many men and women. So that's the first understanding. Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja. Allah made for you from yourselves, wives. But another understanding that we take from here, and some of the scholars of tafsir mentioned it also, is that the meaning here, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja, is that Allah Azza wa Jal made wives for you who are the same as you. They're not like a different creature or a different sort of, you know, a different species to you. They are, you're both human beings, you're both the same. And that's part of what makes the family live together because at the end of the day, you have things in common. And the most basic thing you have in common is that all of you came from Adam and Hawa. So that's part of what is meant by the ayah, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja. Wa ja'ala lakum min azwajikum banina wa hafada. And Allah Azza wa Jal has made for you from your spouses, banin, offspring, children, Wahafada. This word hafada, the scholars had some different opinions about it. This word hafada. 
But the word itself, when we come back to the word itself and what this word actually means, the word itself actually means the one who serves you. The one who serves you, who does a khidmah for you. And there's a lot of different things the scholars said about this particular word. But I think one of the things that I wanted to highlight in this word, and the word itself generally we understand it to mean the grandchildren. So you could translate the ayah and say that Allah has made for you from your spouses, children and grandchildren. But when you come back to this word hafad, I was really surprised at how much the scholars differed over this word and how much they uh, had so many different opinions about what this word means. But actually here, when we look at it, it's because the original meaning of the word is the one who yakhdimuka, alladhi yakhdimuk the one who serves you, the one who helps you out, the one who is there for you. And that I feel is really profound because that's what really you want from your children, right? You know, you want to build this family to be there for each other, to be there for each other. And that's a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for you from your family, banina wa hafada. He's made for you children and he's made for you those people that help you out, those people who are there for you. And even if the word itself, the, the meaning which comes to mind is that it means grandchildren, but still the, the, the origin of the word is the one that serves you, the one that helps you out. And that is truly a blessing of Allah. And Allah provided for you from all of these good things. And from the tayyibat that Allah provided for you is that Allah provided you with family members. And this is from the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no doubt that having children is a great blessing from Allah. It's a rizq from Allah, a provision from Allah. And that the blessing of having those family members that help you out, look out for you and support you and are there for you and serve you, that is something which is a great blessing from Allah and it's one of the tayyibat, one of the beautiful things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us. And we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ad dunya mata, this dunya is a temporary enjoyment. And the best mata wa khayru mata dunya al maratu saliha. And the best of the, of the enjoyment of this world is a righteous wife. So these family members that are within this household are part of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And then Allah said, Is it the falsehood that they believe in? Meaning, do they believe that these things are provided by the idols? Do they believe these things are provided by other than Allah? وَبِنِعْمَةِ هُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ and yet, by the best, through the blessings of Allah or towards the blessings of Allah, they're ungrateful. So I really wanted you to really take this ayah, the ayah is Surah An-Nahl, ayah number 72, and really to reflect upon it and think about it and think about the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal and how much Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed you when it comes to your family. So as we said, the word hafada, uh, in its original, it, it, sort of the original meaning of the word is the one that serves you and the one that looks after you. It can mean grandchildren. It can mean uh, those who you have a relation with them through marriage, i.e. The, the in-laws. It can refer to the husbands of your daughters and some of the scholars of tafsir, they mentioned that it refers to the children of your wife that she had before you married her, for example. Uh, these are all things the scholars of tafsir mentioned about the word hafada, but really what I wanted to focus on, as I said, is that this is about the one who supports you and serves you, and primarily the meaning that sort of comes to mind when you first hear the ayah is that it refers to children and grandchildren. And subhanAllah, in the way that you think about the way that your children uh, benefit you, it's not just that they benefit you in this life through serving you and through khidmah, but they also make that khidmah, that service of you, even after you die. And we know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ 
if the children of if the son of Adam dies, all of his deeds cease except for three. And one of them that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned is that he said, وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُ له, A righteous child that supplicates for that person. So the, the khidmah, the service that your children, your grandchildren do for you is, is more than just actually serving you when you're alive. It even extends on to after you die. And that's one of the virtues and the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal that come from the Muslim family. So really it's about remembering the blessings of Allah and about thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for those blessings. And on that topic, I wanted to come to another ayah. Allah Azza wa Jal, when it talks about thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for the blessings that He's given you, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala said, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah Azza wa Jal said, when your Lord declared, if you show gratitude, I will surely give you increase. And if you are ungrateful, then indeed my punishment is severe. So we have to show gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal for the blessings of our family. And the question then comes, well, how do we show gratitude uh, to Allah Azza wa Jal for the blessings that he's given us, the blessing of the family that he's given us? And perhaps we can quote the ayah in Surah Saba, which is ayah number 13, in which Allah Azza wa Jal said, اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُدَ شُكْرًا وَقَالِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشُّكُورِ Act, O family of Dawood, in gratitude, and how few of my servants are truly grateful. So Allah commands us to act in gratitude. He commands us to, to perform actions, to do things that show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah has blessed us with a family, being part of a Muslim family, then there's no doubt that this is something which deserves Gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal, it's a ni'mah of Allah. We don't want to be like those people about whom Allah said, Afa bil batili yu'minun wa bi ni'matillahi hum yakfurun. Is it the falsehood that they believe in while they are ungrateful or rejecting of the blessings of Allah? And also, we want to show by putting it into practice, by striving to make our families the best that they possibly can be. The next ayah that I want to cover is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal Ya ayyuha nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqakum inna allaha alimun khabir Allah said this in Surah Al-Hujurat, ayah number 13 O mankind, we created you from male and female and we made you into shu'uban wa qaba'ila. We made you into tribes, and we, or we made you into nations and tribes. A sha'ab is more general than the, the qabila. The qabila is like a, a tribe. And within the qabila, there are other uh, like sub-tribes and all different, it goes down many levels. So at the highest kind of level, Allah Azza wa made a sha'ab. And uh, sometimes people translate it as a nation, but perhaps it's, it's underneath a nation. So, uh, you know, at the highest level you have a nation and then you have a sha'ab, like a, a community or a big group of people within that nation. And then you have a qabila within that. And then within the qabila you have various um, branches, sub-tribes and so on. Even down to the uh, fasila that Allah Azza wa Jal said, wa fasilatihi lati tu'wi the sort of close family members that protect a person. So these are all, Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا Allah Azza wa Jal has made this society in a way with a wisdom so that all of us know one another. And this just talks about the, you know, the, the, the broad, the way the society is built up. And the society is built up starting with just small families. And that family eventually turns into, you know, like a, a, a big family. And from a big family, it, you know, it forms part of a bigger unit and a bigger unit until it becomes, you know, all the way up to the level of a qabila and a shab, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this, these nations out of. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us into family unit or family units 
for a great benefit and a great wisdom that is with him subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can know each other and Allah Azza wa Jal told us and this is going to be a theme that comes again and again when it comes to the family inna akramakum indallahi atqakum what really matters the one who is really noble in the sight of Allah is the one who has a taqwa the one who has a taqwa the one who has a fear of Allah Azza wa Jal who protects himself from the punishment of Allah by doing what Allah commanded and by keeping away from what Allah Azza wa Jal prohibited. And again in the beginning, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى O mankind, we created you from male and female. So it's again that referring back to the fact that all of these nations and tribes, all of them came back from a single marriage. And that is between Adam and Hawa alayhim as -salam. And it's on this topic that Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum Again, that concept of taqwa. And it's so interesting that all of the ayat or many of the ayat that deal with the family or even the ayat that are customarily read at the time of the nikah, they deal with a taqwa, having taqwa. And that's because taqwa is really the building block which a Muslim builds everything upon, including their family. So if you were to kind of have a single word that would summarize what you want from your family dynamic and what you want from your household, it is a taqwa. It is a taqwa. And a taqwa, as some of the scholars defined it, they said, it is al amalu bi ta'atillah ala nurin min Allah raja thawabillah. Wa tarku ma'asillah ala nurin min Allah makhafata athabillah. That it is to act in obedience to Allah upon a light of guidance from Allah, hoping for Allah's mercy and to leave disobedience to Allah upon a light of guidance from Allah, fearing Allah's punishment. So to do your best to obey Allah and to do your best to keep away from disobeying Allah. O mankind, have taqwa of your Lord who created you from a single soul and created from that single person, Adam, his mate, Hawa. And from those two, all of the men and women came and have taqwa of Allah الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ The one that you ask by him. So you say, وَاللَّهِ Or you say, بِاللَّهِ أَسْأَلُكَ بِاللَّهِ I ask you by Allah. I ask you by Allah to do this for me. You ask Allah by it. وَالْأَرْحَامِ And here, if we read أَرْحَامِ with a fatha, then the meaning here is, be careful. Fear Allah with regard to your relatives. Fear Allah with regard to your relatives. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Allah is always watching over you. Allah is always watching over you. So this con this ayah contains, first of all, it tells us that that Allah Azza wa Jal began this entire this entire you know all of Bani Adam. Allah Azza wa Jal began this entire human race out of just two people, out of Adam and Hawa, the first Muslim family. And then Allah Azza wa Jal tells us the rights that our family members have over us. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَانِ Have taqwa of Allah, the one that you ask by his name. And fear Allah with regard to your relatives, and indeed Allah is ever watchful over you. So those are just some of the ayat which kind of set the scene when it comes to the Muslim family. And insha'Allah ta'ala in the next episode we're going to be continuing that and looking into more detail about some of the ayat and the ahadith that just deal with the Muslim family in general before we go on to talk about specific aspects of it insha'Allah ta'ala. That's what Allah made easy for us to mention and Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. 
Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.